I'm walking into Scarlett Meredith's showroom, her art studio. And we're gonna talk to her today. She is an incredible artist and I want you to get to know her before I show you all of her incredible work. Hi, Scarlett. Hello. <laughs> well, tell me how you got started. I know that you've got a famous father and you've got some pretty talented daughters too. So tell me about you and how you got into this world of painting. So I just, I grew up around it and that's all I've ever known. I've known if you want to make a living as an artist, you can do it. My dad showed me that it could be done. So it's really, you're immersed in it and it just takes hold of you and you love it. So um, that's kind of what I did. <clears throat> My first oil painting that I ever did, it was because I entered something in high school and I'd never done an oil painting before and I said, he told my dad, and he said, all right, use my studio. They went to church on a Wednesday night and I painted a painting in oils and uh, it was of apples in a copper bowl and dad came back in and said, this is good. And he took his brush, <clears throat> dipped it in and he splattered some paint like that, did one little highlight and he said, okay, help me frame it. Help, he had helped me set up the still life, helped me frame it, and I took it in. And one of the teachers made fun of me that my father had painted it. That so, happened to me in high school. I love it. I did, I'll have to tell you that story, and then I never took art again and I, oh. because of that. For me, I was just like, okay, whatever. I just thought, how silly. Um, so anyway, I thought, well, I'm on to something if the teachers think that my dad did it. And so anyway, they entered it into a regional... Christian school competition and I won that and then it went to whatever and I ended up winning third in nationals with my first wall painting. Wow. So, you know, and I still didn't get it um, how what? that I had that talent. It just wasn't in me. You just got to get to that age where all of a sudden you're like, this is what I want to do and I don't want to do anything else. So um, did you, yeah. but prior to that, did you do any painting or drawing? I did a lot of drawing in high school. Okay. Uh, one of my things, I never painted faces, I couldn't do it, it's the hardest thing to do, yes. and hands. So I would do all these drawn models, but they would not have hands and they would not have faces. But I would dress fashion, do clothes on them, and I had them pinned up all over my room. Tell and, me if I'm wrong, because this is what yeah. I think. I think you need to be a good drawer, you need to be able to draw before you can paint. I do believe um, it's very important. I will say, Drawing is not my strong point. I don't do it. My father's always like, you need to be drawing 24 seven. He's got sketchbooks filled. It's just not my thing. Um, so I don't know. I've done quite well and I'm not a drawer. So what happened after that? After I won the competition. After you won the competition? Nothing, I got distracted by boys at <laughs> college and um, all the fun that goes with everything. Um, I started doing paintings again when I was about 22 and I started on the Fred's back porch, started doing some portraits, playing Why? around. Why? Why? Yeah. Um, I just felt like, hey, it's time to paint and I just, I knew how to do it. I knew how to get the paints together and the brushes and I had a boyfriend who went out on his uh, back deck and started painting a cover from National Geographic, and most people know it. It's the one of the girl with the beautiful the green beautiful eyes. The beautiful blue eyes, yeah, green the eyes, red, yes. the red covering. So you, you had a boyfriend who was a painter, too. No, he just allowed me to paint. <laughs> but it's <laughs> nice now because we're friends, and he's painting now. Oh, I love and that. And it is really, really neat to have that. Um, so I started there and painting, and then I met my, um, the guy I was dating that came, went on to be my husband, mm -hmm. um, another gentleman. Um, anyway, I was dating him at the time and I had gotten some commissions from my dad's friends and I oh, was wow. charging $250 to do portraits of them. And if you know anything, $250 is nothing. And I was paying no, for the frame. No, it's nothing. So the frame might've been 50 right. and then I'm doing all that. But it was great practice and they were big and I did them. And I How big were they? Uh, 24 by 36. Okay. And so um, I was getting these portraits, small commissions here and there from my dad's um, 
clients. So he had painted them when they were children or in their 20s, and now I'm painting his clients' children. So it was a really neat thing. Um, and I remember one day, I was working at this time as an annuity specialist. That's which, so funny. Oh, it's really funny because first of all, I'm horrible at math. Second of all, I could not even to this day tell you what an annuity <laughs> is. So I would look at them and think, why does this click with some people? Like they just seem to get it. Holding an office meeting, um, turning in paperwork, whatever. And I just never clicked and felt like it was my space. So I remember um, <clears throat> one day I thought, you know what, I wanna quit my job and I wanna paint for a living. And it was just this random thing. So I, I drove over to see my boyfriend at the time. Um, and I, and we were in love and we were gonna get married and I wasn't engaged yet. But I went over, I said, you know what? I said, I wanna quit my job and I wanna paint for a living. And God bless him, he said, okay. Mm. And he helped take care of me yeah. um, while I got started. Yeah, until we got married and he still, he still proposed. Um, so anyway, that was a neat thing. So I started painting for a living. And what happened was when I quit that job and I started painting for a living, all of a sudden everything made sense. Because if you're doing what your natural gift is, what you're called to do, you can't help but succeed and excel. There's that. just no way. You can't mess it up. Wow. Yeah. So you started out, you really do fine portrait. You're a fine portrait artist, but that has branched out since. So let's look at some of the paintings that you've done. I especially love this one behind me, which I'm going to look at. I don't know if we need... Uh, no, that one's dad's. Oh, your father did that? Yes. So, oh my gosh, so mm -hmm. Robert Meredith is her father. So this is Maggie in the Morning. But this is interesting to talk about because I was painted as a realistic artist i you know we don't branch out you paint what you see i have been trained completely like that you know you paint what you see i have a certain way that i've been taught how to be you know how to paint and everything my dad is very very detailed so, so your father taught you yes so my father taught me um and really i say he taught me but he didn't really start start teaching me probably until I started doing portraits in my 20s. Because, you know, before this, I had been doing school and just playing around. Now I'm a portrait artist, I'm getting clients. I did my first show, I signed up to do an art show on Marietta Square, where my dad started, mm -hmm. coincidentally. And they were, because of my dad, thank God, I was given the, um, oh my God, I can't remember what it's called the gazebo in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I set up and I put my paintings at $250 and maybe up to 400 and I had 15 commissions. Oh my goodness. And a burnout. I mean, it was oh. like, oh my goodness. But you wanna learn, you wanna learn fast, make no money and have 15 commissions to get done. So that was a big learning experience, but I can't even tell you the hours and days that my father helped literally paint on my paintings to help me. Oh. I mean, I didn't know how to do hands. One good thing was I was really good at painting people. I loved getting the expressions, the hands, but I didn't know the fundamental rules of this is how an arm works, the academic part of it. Right. This is how a muscle goes, and this is how you round something. And the absolute worst, I, I was the absolute worst at backgrounds. So everyone, dad's like, great, let me guess, you want me to do another background <laughs> for you? And I mean, he would just show me and I could just not get it. Um, so anyway, this has been a fun learning process and he has been very patient with me, which I love now because now my daughters paint and they come over and I do the exact same thing my dad used to do and they do the same thing to me. We just. They want to use all my materials. I'll stop everything to help them. And that's what my dad did for me. Is he so proud of you now? You know, I guess he is. I don't see it. As far, he's very, very difficult and hard on me. Mm -hmm. I mean, he makes me cry and he feels it's a good day if I'm crying. Aww. He's like, oh, that's good. <laughs> but what I see is he sends my artwork Daniel's World, which you'll see in a minute, mm -hmm. he sends that those pieces of artwork, excuse me, to his fellow artists to show him what I'm doing. 
Oh, and wow. I see that. That's great. And I see that he does that. And I hear people go, your father is so proud of you. So I wouldn't know it mm -hmm. other than he shows his love by helping me unconditionally. And that, um, that other people tell me that he says it. So I don't know, dad. Do you? <laughs> so in the next video, actually I've already shot it, we're gonna talk about these four murals. But before that, I wanna, I wanna see some of your fine artwork and sure. some things you're working on now. So show us. Okay, so I don't have a lot of examples here. What about these over on the wall? Well, I'm gonna show those, but meaning like how I started with these, because what happened on these over here is these were all traditionally painted paintings like Maggie in the morning. Okay. All of them had very simple dark backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Well, I went in 2020, I decided I was bored and I was no longer gonna paint like everybody else. So I started adding color and I did a show called Art 2020, Scarlet 2020. This gives you the biggest example of my traditional work. Okay, now let me interject right here because sure. that's chicken wing. Okay, so she has this tiny, precious dog. But didn't you rescue her? I did. She was sick. Yeah, uh, yeah she was And her real name sick. is Nala. I mean, and she literally looked like a chicken wing. And she, she's adopted that name, so everyone knows uh, knows her as chicken wing. And she's chicken precious. Wing. Especially when I dye her pink. <laughs> yeah, she I'm dyes her it. pink, too. So this and is... And that's, that's uh, yeah. dog paint, so it's not harming her. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's like beet juice, and it is okay. literally the brightest pink you've ever seen. So anyway, I would never do anything to hurt my baby. So this is more traditional. You see the back, the black background behind her, the same. This is kind of what I'm talking about. I have not added any color to her. Mm -hmm. I just love this painting, and I don't I want to touch it. It's painting. perfection for what I feel. I captured my dog and yeah. what I love is she is such a mess. And here she looks so stoic and regal. Yeah, yeah she's usually a mess. I mean, yeah, her hair goes everywhere. Yeah, she's a hot mess. I love she's, her. She's like her mama. She's so funny. And so here you go. You will see here, this was traditionally um, a painting that I had done, but I went back and I added these bright, vibrant colors. Oh, I see. And I did it because I can. And right. that's the difference, the same thing um, we just get bored. Gosh, I saw this in your paintings, but I just didn't get it until yeah. you pointed it out. So what this is, this is oil painting. And then on top of this, I have done this acrylic, which oh. gives it this really opaque, thick color, flat, against this beautiful, vibrant, you know, all the translucency of the skin colors. Yes. And when you do that, I think you get magic. I love yes. it. And when I say bored, it's not bored. We just... As artists, we are constantly challenging ourselves. Yes. Constantly. I don't think it's boredom. Let's see what else I can do. Let's yeah. stretch. It's like, I don't want to paint. So this is a copy girl. of one of my paintings. Okay. She is fabulous. I haven't added any color to her or anything. Um, but anyway, I just love this kid. I love every one of her freckles. She's darling. Everything about her. I love her hair looks like Medusa. It does. I mean, look at her. You can tell this that kid I mean, her personality I'm from across yes. the room. Yes. So this is this an is your daughter, isn't it? This is a poignant painting. This was one of my first ever paintings where I broke loose from how my dad painted. I picked up an old palette that I'd been using to um, get my paints off of. And I sanded a little bit and I painted on top of the palette. So you can actually, if you feel it, you can feel the paint underneath it and everything. I love that. And then I did this loose brush stroke and I painted my daughter in here. Oh my gosh. And this is truly, absolutely i think one of the best i've ever done I love it. and it was just that moment where i went holy crap i've really done something here and from then on i started painting on my palettes and i still do that to this day it's another one she was painted traditionally she had a cream sweater on a plain background and i i just do colors because i can Gosh. look how fun it is oh she's beautiful I love the orange and the pink in her hair and that white looks like a flower. Yeah, see, I just get to go crazy and have fun. And now, are you painting these people? Um, I've already painted this. This was a wedding gift I did for one of my, um, for one of my buddies. And so I did that of her and her husband. Wow. I did that as a Scarlet Mini. I like to do little five by seven Scarlet, oh. Scarlet Minis. They're oh, much, I love it. much less expensive mm -hmm. um, and they're quick and easy, and they're a perfect gift for someone. So, yeah. Oh, called Scarlet right. Minis. Scarlet Minis. Now, what about this little guy over here? So, oh my gosh, this is one of my faves. 
I like to call him Andy for Andy Warhol. He so, does look like Andy Warhol. Yes. So <laughs> this was a traditional painting. All of this behind there, and I have a photo, which might be cool mm -hmm. if you show later yeah. the actual yeah, beginning insert, of it. But this was a dark background. So when I went into 2020 color, this is when I did this, which I love. And I backed up, I said, it looks like wings behind him. And I cropped out his hair, and I, I just love everything about it. Um, wow. That's how I like to paint immediacy, just boom. Yes, yes. Okay, what else, what other paintings? So this little girl over here? Uh, yes, that's been blown up. That's an 11 by 14. And um, so it was very small. And my friend, uh, Vicki Jackson, another talented artist, she blew that up for me on her printer so I could use it for, you know, advertising and stuff. Mm -hmm. I just Let's haven't see. put it out on a panel yet. Now, tell me about these dogs. I love them. So oh, you've got several goodness. of these. Now, so I did these for my clients, this one and the one over here. And I named them Elvis and what's his wife's name? Why can't I remember Priscilla. It? Priscilla and Elvis. Now you've got a couple of, oh, they're the same ones. Okay, because I see two so over there. So what happened was I did them a certain size. Mm -hmm. My friend, Vicki Jackson, blew them up for me for art I shows. I see, I see. So people can see what I do. But yeah, this is Priscilla and that's Elvis. And I of course it. that's not their real names, but I just thought that's a perfect way to do it. I... What's really neat about this, and pardon this, this is a scratch from when it was at a show. This is painted in oil. This background is done in acrylic. So it's the same thing I've been doing, but what happens, I want to take the premise of this and do all kinds of different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And then you put your animal on top of it, or yeah. even your child can go on there. But we could do a Picasso background. We could do a Mondrian, oh. Mondrian, yes. yes. Anything like that, Picasso, um, anything we wanted to do. And then we can put your pet in front of it. So Please. this is why I have this one. I did this as a starter. Love that. Oh Isn't gosh. that great for a child's, it's a girl, she's turning 14 or 15, and to put her dog there. So this is the background. Okay, so that's acrylic, and then you're gonna oil paint on top, on of, top it, of it. Which, okay. when you do that, you get absolute magic. That's oh where gosh. you get the magic. I love so it. So I'm gonna show you other, this one was a traditional painting. This is my daughter, Amber, again. Looks like she's in Tahiti. Isn't that funny? Yeah. And actually, um, who's the artist that does that? I can't even think right now. Gotta have some more caffeine. But anyway, this was all a serious background that probably my dad had helped me with, <laughs> with um, maybe some trees and it was green and a little bit of foliage up here. And I said, no more, like I'm tired of, you know, this dress on her had been brown with little white flowers. Oh my gosh. And so I went in and can I tell you how much fun? This is fun when you yeah. do something like this. Yeah. So, and anyway, so I love this. Same thing with here, she was traditionally painted. And then I went back and I just made her wacky. I and love I it. And I love it. Almost like an Indian, it's you know, just, the war paint. It's like traditional and contemporary together. And that's what I love. Thank I you. love that. Okay, look at this precious painting. Same thing, traditional, it was white oh, sheet I and all that. And I'm like, no, let's have fun. Let's put polka dots and paint a really strong white background. So that's what I do is taking something traditional and just kicking it up a notch because what, I can. What's this? Just one of my abstracts that I was playing with. And when I walked into her studio today, I said, Scarlett, what's up with the bush? Okay, I'm laughing so hard. <laughs> These are funny stories. So I was at a job site and I told my employee, I said, do you see that tree? When we come back, I want you to put it in the back of my car. And I said, we're going to do something with it. So I said, what do you feel? This girl's so brilliant. And Rose said, I said, I'm thinking bronze. And Rose said, what about Georgia Clay? Mm -hmm. And I said, now that's doing something very organic. And um, anyway, so we brought it in. She spray painted it now. I don't know if I'm going to gild the, um, the leaves on it, gild some of the roots. Mm. I don't know what I'm going to do, but right now, but I've got the It's like a hangers. sculpture. Too. That's what it is. I'm going to actually hang it on the wall, and it's going to be a sculpture. Oh, my so, gosh. And I love it. To me, it's like the Garden of Eden. It's the tree of life. So um, the other thing that Scarlett does is the most incredible faux painting in large mansions yeah. in Atlanta, but I'm sure you do small stuff too. And we are going to um, have the opportunity to follow her along when she does some of this. Uh, I mean, there are huge mansions and huge walls and ceilings. 
So um, we'll follow along with her. Tell us and about I mean, something uh, you're working on now. So one of the houses we're going to be doing, and I put it up on Facebook because I'm so excited. It's my client, and what I love about him, look, well, when I first met him, he said Scarlet, and he took me downstairs, and he goes, I want this entire downstairs to look like a street in Italy. Mm. And I mean, if you could have, here's a dream that Scarlet's been waiting for her whole life. Oh. It was this. <clears throat> so... And then what I love about him, I'm like, you know what? I think this ceiling needs to be arched and we're gonna make it look like a tunnel. And I come back the next day and he's got it framed in oh my for gosh. an arch. I'm not kidding. First of all, I, I call it. him Bob the Builder and his name's Bob, so it's funny. And he is a builder. So anyway, um, I'm so excited to share this with you because literally I am going to be doing every technique down, in, down he calls it the terrace level in this house that I've been learning for 25 years. Okay, I can't so wait. So it's going to be really, right. like, you're talking about a master class in learning fast and good stuff. Fantastic. Yeah. I can't wait to Thanks. film that. I can't, I just also have to mention, um, Scarlett is looking very much like chicken wings. She's got some hair sticking oh up behind God, her head. <laughs> but look, this is, t turn around, this is what she does when she's working. She sticks paintbrushes in her... I do. Hair. And look, at she's got two sun, two glasses on the top of her head. I so get this. <laughs> I so, and like at the end of the day, when I've been having a crazy painting day, I'll go to the bathroom and look in the mirror and I'll have six brushes like this. And I'm like, wow, it was a good day. I so, and then the worst is you forget about them and you get in your car and you catch your head and I have paintbrush marks oh, all over the room. That of my is car. hysterical. Yeah. So, so, do you have um, a website? I do. It's scarletsart.com. Okay. Scarlett, can you tell us, what's your favorite medium, like medium, what, what is your favorite thing to paint? Okay, so this is what I think separates me, especially in my, actually in both of my, um, my fine art and my faux finishes. I can paint with both acrylic and oil. Most people that do faux finishes, they can only do acrylic or oil, they can't go back and forth. I do it, I, I've worked with it all my life, so I actually was trained in oils, I love painting oil with oil because they give you a translucency, a layer effect that you can't get with anything else. But then when you put it together with acrylic, you, that's where you get the magic. So I think that's what separates me Fantastic. from the rest. Stay tuned for part two of Scarlett's interview when we will view and talk about her four graffiti walls. Until then, be sweet.